In this video, we'll be going over how to set up the polarizing microscope and reviewing its components. Once you've chosen a bench spot, take the microscope out of the shelf in the front side of your bench. Always carry the microscope carefully and on its back part only. Don't bump into anything with the microscope as they're very delicate. Never pull or push the microscope across the table. This can immediately change adjustments in the stage and various other parts of the microscope. Always lift the microscope using the back part to move it. Plug the microscope into the outlet at your bench spot. Turn it on by using the green power button on the back right side of the microscope. Turn the knob below to adjust the light intensity. Look into the microscope eyepieces. If they seem dirty or dusty, use the provided wipes only. Other materials may scratch the lenses. Some eyepieces will have a crosshair, which will need to be adjusted for each user's vision specifications. To do this, adjust the dial closest to your eye until the crosshair is in focus. Next, we'll look at each component of the microscope and how they can be manipulated. The field diaphragm determines the illuminated area on the thin section. Rotating the field diaphragm ring changes the size of the field diaphragm. For normal observation, the diaphragm is set slightly larger than the field of view. Above is the lower polarizer. Normally, no adjustments are needed if this is set to 00. zero. If not set to 00, zero, ask the instructor, your TA, or the lab technician. The condenser lens can be moved into place using the swing out lever. For some microscopes, the lever is on the left side. Place a slide on the stage. You'll notice that it can rotate 360 degrees when the locking screw is loosened. Make note of the degrees as the labels can be used to measure angles between features, such as the extinction angle. Above the stage are the objective lenses. Your microscope may have three or four, ranging from four times up to 60 times. To switch the lens, only ever use the silver wheel above the lenses. Never push or pull on the objective lenses themselves. When starting the thin section analysis, use the four times objective lens to get a good overview of the bigger parts of the thin section. The upper polarizer, also known as the analyzer, must be pulled out to the right to engage. The analyzer has an adjustment wheel on top which should be set to zero, zero. If not, ask the lab technician for help. Otherwise, do not touch it. The accessory plate can be pushed in or pulled out. When not in use, be careful not to pull it out too far as it can easily fall. The Bertrand lens ring is the black wheel above the accessory plate. This is normally set to zero if it's not needed. The focus dials for the microscope are on the left side of the base. These adjust the stage height to focus the thin section view. The small inner dial is the fine focus and the large outer dial is the coarse focus. The coarse focus should never be used if the 40 times lens is in use. This is because the thin section could be pushed onto the objective above and damage both pieces, which are expensive to replace. To move the stage up, you have to turn the dials away from you, and to move the stage down, turn the dials towards you. There is also a fine focus knob on the right side of the base, which you can use if it's more comfortable. However, never rotate the left or right fine focus knob while holding the other. If you're unsure about anything, notify your TA or the lab technician before making any adjustments. When you're finished with the microscope, Move the objective back to the four times setting. Take the slide off the stage and put it back in the thin section box. Turn off the microscope and unplug it. Finally, wrap the cord around the base and carefully store the microscope in the locker. Again, use the back part of the microscope when moving it. You should now be familiar with all of the parts of the polarizing microscope. Watch the other videos in this series to learn more about the microscope's use, as well as some issues you may encounter when doing thin section microscopy.